Welcome back to the channel guys. Out in the shop today, ripping the transmission out of this old parts truck. Yep, we finally got some time to, to get her out here and we really need the trans for the 51. We wanna get that thing running and to do it, we need a flywheel and a clutch and we gotta put the trans in and we need the trans out of this thing. So we're gonna rip it out now. Yep, so let's go get all of the extensions and let's get this trans off. Shouldn't take long. Alright guys, we just gave birth to an NV4500 Trans. It's a heavy one. It is a really heavy one. But it's out. It didn't take that long, but maybe, yeah. maybe an hour and we wasted 15 minutes looking for tools like we always do. But she's out and uh, Sawzall made quick work of it. She looks pretty good. You know, she's not too rusty. She's uh, I think it'll be hard to break this one. This is exactly what we needed. Now we just got to get it back into the 51 and get a clutch in it and might be able to start it. Time to yank the NV3500 out of the 51 and slap this bad boy in. Let's get to it. All right, guys. I'm sure you saw the last video where this thing moved at about 5,200 RPM. So we're really curious as to what this clutch looks like. If there's any clutch left. I mean, there's a little, a little something sticking out here. But we're going to run this uh, pressure plate off and see what she looks like. That's a lot of dust coming out of there. Oh, that looks hot. Holy crap. Look at this. Look at this. The clutch just delaminated. The flywheel side's still pretty decent, but the pressure plate side is gone. It literally just fell out in pieces and it's just powder. It was just running on the rivets on the flywheel side or the, the pressure plate side. But this whole side, there's no friction material left. That's crazy. That's crazy. I've never seen anything like that. I can't believe this thing moved at all. Okay guys, so we've got both transmissions out right now. And you can see this is the NV3500 that we pulled out of the truck. It's a lot smaller than this NV4500 that we pulled out of the parts truck that's going in here. So this is a cast aluminum housing, much smaller trans. Came behind V6s and small V8s like the 5.2. Anything bigger than that got this NV4500, which it came behind the 5.9 like we've got here. It also came behind the V10 and the Cummins trucks. And those Cummins guys are putting a lot of power through them and they hold up. I mean, it's a it's a cast iron housing. It's a stout trans. And the nice thing is we've got a spare transfer case now too, because this is the exact same one we've got here. So if we grenade this one, it's an easy swap to put this one in. And this one should hold up a hell of a lot better. Yeah, it should hold a lot more power, that's for sure. All right, so if we, before we can get this trans installed, we got to put the clutch in. We got a uh, center force dual friction clutch. And they got their famous counterweight system on there. It should hold what we're doing. If not, we need a lot more expensive clutch, but this should get us going for now, at least. Better than the old slipper clutch we had in the NV4500, NV so... Yeah, that's true. This one has friction material on both sides. Alright guys, so we just got this other transmission swapped into the truck, and we got the, the clutch put in. I'll bring this one step closer to getting this thing fired up. The next step we're going to do is put the distributor in, and for a distributor we're going to run the Holley Terminator X. Yeah, so this thing's running a Holley Terminator X system. It's the universal kit using most of the Chrysler... Uh, hardware sensors. We've got some bigger fuel injectors in it and we're running some some aftermarket sensors like map sensor and everything But the first thing we got to do is we're running a dual sync for cam and crank and then that is going to run our LS truck coils So we're not actually running it as a distributor, but we got to set the motor to 50 degrees for top dead center Drop this in there and then follow the directions and there's LEDs and it seems complicated, but I, I don't know I think we'll figure it out and then 
I mean, we got oil in the motor. I, I want to hear this thing make some noise. We're missing turbo lines, so we can't have the turbo on, but I think we can make it make some noise today. Yep. Yeah, there's still lots of odds and ends to do, but it's going to be nice to hear this thing run. It'll give us uh, some more motivation. Yeah, let's get to it. This is the moment of truth. Let's see if it'll actually turn. Uh... Oh! <laughs> that worked! That was first try. She thinks. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. All right, no, let's find 50 gears for that bed, sorry. I think that was compression. It's hard to tell with the trans on the back. Yeah, I think that was exhaust. We'll go back. As long as you go far enough, you take up all the lash and then you're good. Don't overshoot the 50 degree yellow line. Yeah, this feels like the compression stroke because it's kind of hard to be smooth. Yellow line. It's like 48 degrees, but it said it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so that's out. Now we got to pull this factory distributor. That grimy, nasty thing. I don't know how many miles are on this engine, but that's gross. All right, now we got to start reading. You know how to read, Daryl? Uh, I think so. Oh. Never mind. There's pictures. You don't actually need to know how to read. There she is. Except that doesn't seem right. <clears throat> there it is. Okay. All right, let's plug this ECU in and see if it's going to work. Where are the rest of my connectors? Key on. Oh, we got flashing lights. That's good. Now we're gonna go through the final steps of this Holly uh, instruction book here. Right sure. now we're disconnecting the coils. Do the injectors too, it says. All right, so we disconnected everything. Next, connect the 10 pin distributor connector to the Holly E5. So there should be a connector coming off this distributor. That's right here. All right, there should be a Holly connector laying down here somewhere in the harness. You got it over there? Yep, yeah, that's right there. All right. One thing I give credit to Ford, they put the distributor in the easy spot. Not like all these other motors. Hiding them in the back, or you can't see them. You can't get to them. All right. All right, so it's plugged in. We disconnected all the injectors and the coils. So now turn the key to run. This will power the distributor. Sweet. Let's turn it to run. So what we're doing right now is calibrating the distributor, making sure the cam and the crank sensors are triggering. Hold on, shut her down! Fuel leak. Injector uh, leaking at the rail. All right, well, we probably should have pulled the fuel pump fuse. I didn't think about it. We set, we did the TPS auto set, so now the ECU wants to, wants to fire. Which was just this one, or? Yep. That guy? All right. Number. I got it three. Probably tore an O-ring. So we'll pop those injectors off and put a new O-ring on. We're gonna need uh some rags. We got lots of fuel. That fuel pump works really good. Uh it'll support I think like 600 horse. Now oh, we need the flush line anyway, right? Alright, so we'll take two guys. We had a little fuel leak here. It was just a tore O-ring on the injector. 
But we got that squared away and we pulled the relay for the pump so we can focus on this distributor. Yeah, so we'll go back to turn the key on, and this time the fuel pump shouldn't run because there's no relay. Alright, so that's on. And now, clockwise rotor rotation, which this is. Turn the housing until the rotor contact pointed, is pointed at the black crank position sensor. Oh boy, I can't see anything in there. Figure two. What? Oh, that's a problem. We just hit the intake. Slowly turn the housing clockwise until it goes off. Oh, we got lights going on and off. All right, so I think we are going to have to rotate the distributor somehow. Turn backwards. Come on. We'll go one more That's two. It, I think it well, might be too much the other yeah. way. Yeah, let's try it. Let's try it back in. All right, she's back down in. Oh, we've got to plug it back in. Um, all right, so now we'll turn the key back on. We'll try the rotation again. Key on. Lights on. So now we rotate clockwise until the rotor points at. <clears throat> Both cam and crank should be illuminated. Yes, they are. Slowly turn the, the housing clockwise until the crank LED goes off. Right there. Got that. Then slowly turn the housing counterclockwise until the crank LED comes back on. Right there. This will position the distributor close to where it needs to be. Install and snug the distributor clamp. All right. Ooh, getting close. Let's try that. Bolt her down. We are getting close. All right, this is the last step. We gotta put some fuel in the tank, hit the key, see what happens. Yeah, but we didn't put the filler neck in yet, so. So we'll try not to spill it all over the place. Uh, we do have two funnels going down there. And the tank's really full. It doesn't sound like it's running out on the floor yet. Save our race cars. God. How much that was? I don't know. Probably not enough. I think we get a little handle on this flow. Why couldn't you pour it like that from the start? Can't believe we're putting fuel in it. All right, guys, it's the moment we've all been waiting for. We got everything hooked up that's the minimum that we need to get hooked up to get this thing to fire. And now's the moment of truth. You want to work the throttle over here if it tries to start, and I'll work the key yeah, and the I can laptop. Figure, I'll figure out how to hold that wide open for you. All right. We got a lot of green lights on well, the ECU, so. Problem with the throttle over here is the exhaust is right in my face. <laughs> I don't know who planned that. All right, you ready? Yep. Here we go. She's making smoke. Vacuum line the fuel pressure regulator. We've only got 28 pounds of fuel pressure. Might have to adjust the regulator. Yeah, I don't know what it's supposed to come preset up. Let's try cranking it again. Let's see what we got. Okay, Woo! That's 48 pounds. So lock that down there. And then remove the card. And where the timing is. <clears throat> 
could be from 180 out too. Flip the distributor 180 degrees. It has to do something different. I, I don't know. I'll crank it. Let's see what happens. Hopefully it makes noise. Woo! <laughs> that sounds insane. You know, it's amazing. It fires up really fast when you put the distributor in right. Yeah, it's awesome. All right, I'm gonna add a double the idle air control because I've taken it out earlier thinking maybe it was too much air, but let's see, it should idle a little bit better now. We'll find out. Does it seem like it's got too much fuel or not enough fuel? It kind of hurts all right now. Let me, uh, I can probably throw a tick more timing at it. Let's see if that helps. Make sure you press subscribe. Let me check my beer. All right, so looking through the data log, we're cranking at 25 pounds per hour of fuel. And then the tune I put together, which I kind of stole from someone else, which everybody says not to do, had 240 pounds per hour of fuel after that. So I think it was flooding itself out. So I took a ton of fuel out of it, and it should, it should run pretty decent now. So I'm going to crank it here. <laughs> oh, that sounds awesome. Oh, definitely blew all the dust off the ceiling. That's some satisfaction. Hell that yeah. is some satisfaction. It's alive. Oh, that sounds good. That's gonna sound so gnarly with the turbo. Oh man, my ears are ringing a little bit. That feels so good. Oh, it's awesome. That's satisfaction. Let's do it again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, that's insane. Oh, that's insane. My ears are ringing. <laughs> oh, that's the coolest thing ever. That is the coolest thing ever.